In an op-ed for Fox News, Phil Labonte, lead singer of All That Remains, writes why society is failing men and boys. We're in danger of losing a whole generation of men and families they'd help build. He writes, every day we see more grown men and young boys dropping out of school, dropping out of work and choosing to drop out of society entirely. They're getting lost in distractions, chasing comfort and losing the sense of purpose that used to drive men to live with meaning and ambition. We need to turn this around. Phil says, in 1998, I started the heavy metal band All That Remains. And in the past 25 years, I've performed for hundreds of thousands of people worldwide. Most of them are young men. I've had countless conversations with them, and often their stories are devastating. I hear about addiction, depression, and a feeling that there is no hope. Some of them tell me that my music helped them find a little light in the darkness. But while I'm glad I can be that for some, the fact that so many feel this way is a massive problem. The foundation of any strong society is built on family, faith, and community. And without strong male figures and role models, these foundations start to crack. I consider myself lucky I had a dad who showed me what being a man is all about. He was a blue collar guy from Western Mass. He was a machinist, a construction worker, an entrepreneur, and a business owner. Well, we, while we didn't do the same type of work, he was and has always been the type of man I aspire to be. So many young men today don't have that, and it's showing. And I'll add this. This is why Jordan Peterson became so popular. It's not about him complaining about censorship and gender ideology. It was because his message was bigger than that. Millions of people tuning in to watch his lectures, watch what he has to say. Why? Because, you know, it's funny. He's a professor. You don't often associate that kind of personality with a strong male role model. But here's the guy who sometimes just starts crying and he's like, the chimpanzees, you're chimpanzee full of snakes. And it's like, you're like, why is the man so upset? But then he says, clean your room, bucko. You got to clean your room before you change the world. And he was sending a message to young men about responsibility, about purpose, about destiny, about what you must do. Now, they attacked him for it. Toxic masculinity, alt-right, all this other fake garbage. They lied about everything because they didn't like the fact that young men found a male role model who said, clean your room, get in shape, get in gear. The machine state wants you, men, to be weak, feeble, and effeminate. They want your testosterone levels to fall from 1,000 to 100. It's funny because if you take a look at the healthy testosterone levels of a male, they tell you it's between 300 and 1,000. But I got to tell you, if you're at 300, you know, I know what happens is every guy says, no, you should be at 800 plus. It's like, okay, guys, like there's healthy ranges, but a certain degree it is better. Though they do say like if it's really high, it could be bad for your heart. But typically you want more testosterone if you're a dude. You got the Try Guys on BuzzFeed famously several years ago, these four dudes getting their testosterone levels checked and their testosterone was the equivalent of an 80 year old man. They were like in the 200s. Then you had this viral story about NPR hosts who's like, my testosterone level was 114. And you're like, holy crap, dude. Like that's called hypogonadism, where you're going to be suffering from fatigue, depression, mood swings, hot flashes, just like, yo, you got to you got to get in gear. I recommend talking to a medical professional. They'll tell you what to do. I recommend, first of all, um, anaerobic exercise, lifting. Wah! Exercise in general is good. Strength training builds testosterone, high fat meat diets, you know, pulling the heart out from a fresh deer and eating its courage. I don't really recommend that, although I think people do that. Maybe it's the liver. I don't know. But you got to be careful eating liver because it's got a lot of vitamin A. Anyway, I digress. There's a lot you can do. There's a lot you can do to better yourself, to be healthy, and you must. You must do these things. Phil goes on to say the National Fatherhood Initiative reports that 17.5 million children, nearly one in four, are growing up without a father at home. It's a huge number. Their research also shows that children raised in a home without fathers results in greater likelihood of poverty, drug use, and prison. But it's not just about absent fathers. We're also seeing fewer and fewer spaces that exist exclusively for men and boys to connect with each other. This trend is problematic for several reasons. First, it reflects on the lack of value we place on men, which can be viewed as an outright hostility to men and boys in society. Second, because of the lack of value we place on men, they no longer feel their own value in society and choose to opt out altogether. One of the areas we're seeing this play out is education, where boys and men are falling behind. 
College enrollment among young Americans has declined gradually over the past decade. According to Pew Research, young men now make up only 44% of young college students, down from 47 in 2011. I'm going to pause right there, and I'm going to rebut you good sir, Phil Levante. I actually think it's good that young men aren't going to college. I understand the point you're making. They're falling behind in social expectations. But college is a waste of time and money, and it's a detriment in the long run. You want to be a lawyer or a doctor, maybe you got to go to college because we have laws and requirements. In some places, you don't actually have to go to college to get a bar, to, to pass the bar, sorry, to get your legal, uh, uh, to get your, uh, to pass the bar exam and be able to practice as a lawyer. But usually it's like, if you want to work in sciences, it makes sense to go to a university. That's where they happen. But why are people going to college for music business? You know what I mean? I know, I know people who have got degrees in music business. They never worked in music. Journalism degrees? Get out of here. But I get the point he's trying to make. He was going to say, and this gap in education is spilling downstream into the job market. As Senator Marco Rubio noted in his report, the state of the working and non-working man, men are decreasingly participating in traditionally male jobs. Rubio notes in 1985, the median male wage was sufficient to provide comprehensive health insurance, reliable transportation, good housing, a healthy diet and college tuition with 20 percent left over for other consumption and saving. The same man in 2022 could work while the whole work, the whole uh, the whole year to pay for middle class essentials and still come up 10 weeks short. It's not just about money either. According to the data from the National Institute of Mental Health, Men in the U.S. die by suicide at a rate of four times higher than women. Additionally, men are more likely to engage in illicit drug use and to begin using alcohol and drugs at a younger age. And drug use is more likely to result in a visit to the emergency room or in death for men than in women, according to the National Institute on Drug Abuse. Well, I, I, can, I can tell you why I think this is. Men are worthless. In society, a young man is worthless. Sorry. That's reality. And so it's tough. But don't get me wrong. You must develop your worth. You must build your worth. Now, I'm being kind of a dick on purpose. Men, of course, are not worthless. A young man has all the potential in the world to be a great leader, to be a CEO, to be whatever he wants to be. The issue is, as a young man, without attaining those skills, there's very little value. And this is the reality of evolutionary biology or the state of men and women. And women don't experience the same thing. Women, young women, and this has always been the case, have the highest value. And there's, there's only men and women. OK, so, of course, it's just binary. Women have maximum value. Men have minimal value. Over time, this inverts. A skilled male who has survived to molt is scarred and chiseled and ripped and hairy and 35 years old. And it's the winter in the north, northern Europe. This is a guy who knows how to live. He's proven himself capable. He can survive. He can hunt. He can do all the things he needs to do. Women create life that is intrinsic to women. Women don't have to earn the ability. They need only survive with the assistance of someone who can who can who is capable. Now, feminists get offended by this because feminists want to be masculine. The masculine is starting at nothing and working towards everything with most men failing. That's true. And the feminine is to create life and to hold within you the intrinsic value of humanity. And men seek to protect that. But men have to earn that position. And you know what? There are some men that reject this. They don't like that idea. And there are some women that reject this. They're feminists. They say, no, women should be girl bosses. You can be whatever you want to be. A dad, a guy can be a stay at home dad. I'm not saying you don't have to do this. I'm saying that through evolutionary biology and psychology, weak men didn't matter. You have 10 young men who were born and you have 10 young women. Those 10 young women must survive for they literally create life. Without them, there are no humans. Sorry, young men. There's a reality here. Nine of you might die fighting a bear. The last one finishes the bear off and survives. And that one man, he can have all the kids in the world. But he is but one component and cannot create the life himself. This has been the natural way that humans evolved. The strong men reproduce the weaker men. It's natural selection. They call this greater male, uh, greater male variability. But it's also why uh, uh, why men vary so much relative to women. Greater male variability is that uh, men are dramatically different. It's a wider bell curve in all aspects to women because this allows human evolution. Some weak men die off, don't have kids. Strong men have many kids. And the women are the ones who make those children. 
You can do whatever you want. You don't have to be a mom if you don't want to be a mom. You don't got to be a dad if you don't want to be a dad. I'm not saying it's the case. I'm saying this is just where biological roles come from. But the reason why I'm telling you this, young men, is that you have to earn it. You don't deserve it. There are many men who are jealous and angry that women can go on YouTube, for instance. Here's a fact in marketing. If a woman goes on YouTube and makes a video, she's going to get tons of subscribers just very easily. It's just true. Not all women. Attractive women, for sure. But, you know, most women have an advantage so long as they have an average capability. Guys like watching women. Men don't have that same luxury. It's much more difficult to get a foothold. You have to be the cream of the crop, the best of the best, rise above everyone else and work 10 times as hard. But that's what being a man is all about. Who's complaining about that? Yo, if you're a guy and you're like, I don't think it's fair. Men are treated this way. Bye. Have fun. That's life. Okay? You've got to find the heaviest thing you can carry and you can carry it. And you're going to be upset and you're going to say other people didn't have to do that. Well, that ain't nothing you can do about it. You're going to wake up one day and you're going to see the son of a millionaire. And he's going to be wearing the finest clothes, riding the best equipment, with the best bike, the best motorcycle, whatever it is. And you're going to say, that's not fair. Well, too effing bad. If you want it, there's one way you get it. You grind. Because the research is clear. There's one thing that proves success. Perseverance. In all metrics, when they test this stuff, they find only one characteristic. Characteristic. It doesn't matter if you're rich. doesn't matter if you're poor. doesn't matter if you're ugly. doesn't matter if you're missing a leg. I'm not kidding. It is when you give up, you fail. And so they actually did these tests where they tracked this, the, the uh, individuals who are wealthy. They tracked uh, uh, individuals who are poor. And they found that wealthy individuals started successful businesses and made more money. Why? They never gave up. Poor individuals started making more money, pulled themselves out of poverty, started successful businesses. Why? They never gave up. And here's the reality. You have an upper limit. Maybe your potential is limitless. Those people exist. Most people don't have that. That's okay. Maybe you were born in poverty and you come from a broken home and you don't know what to do with your life. It's going to be hard. You've got to, you've got to figure it out. You have to solve those puzzles. But you know what? There are many stories of individuals who grew up with, with dirt. And you know where they ended up? At 40 years old with three kids making sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 a year living in an okay house with an okay car. And that was always okay. That's the American dream. Come from a broken home. You had a, you had a bad dad, you had a, you had a bad mom, whatever it may be, drug abusing mom, abusive dad. And you leave and you say, I will make something better. And you work as hard as you can. And it is hard. It'll never be easy. What would life be if it was just easy? What would anyone, everyone would be so bored. No, we want the challenge. That is our purpose. And you will work harder than you've ever worked. And you have to work harder than you've ever worked. And it is shocking to me that there are so many people who grew up on the internet, who grew up in this world, who think I should not have to. Laughable. The world is your oyster, my friends. You do what you want to do. But don't be surprised if sitting around and not doing anything proves nothing for you. And I hear many. They say, I don't know what to do. I hear you. I've been there. You you are willing to do the work. You are willing to make the moves. But what are the moves to be made? How do you get from here to there? It's not always so clear, is it? But I can tell you one thing. There's always exercise, eating right. There's always studying and reading books. Go out and make yourself the best version of yourself you can be. Maybe maybe some of you right now, you, you, you don't know what it is. Do you play video games all day? You sit around, you're out of shape. You watch podcasts and you play video games all day. And you say, I don't know what to do. Here's some advice. First, start eating better. Consult a health professional. Eat better. Eating is half the, half the battle. You have to exercise. Proper blood flow to the brain, my friends. You must get that cardio in, those anaerobic exercises. Boost your T levels. It'll make you stronger, faster, better than you've ever been. You will be the best version of yourself. And then you say, but all I'm good at is playing video games. Start streaming, baby. It doesn't matter what you do. What you do is valuable if you put the work in and figure out how to make a business out of it. That's how many people started becoming podcasters and streamers. Now, I'm not going to pretend like that's the end all be all. But you've really got to just make yourself the best version of yourself. And whatever your passion is, you just can't give up. But you know what? It might be much more simple than that. Maybe you got a job at Starbucks and you're making coffee. Just keep working. 
take extra shifts. If you don't know what to do and you have nothing to do, get in shape, eat right, and work double shifts. You know why? Because they're going to be like, this dude is the master. They're going to start asking you for advice. I mean, seriously, just at Starbucks, you might say, I don't want to do that. Well, you better find your passion, baby, and you better find that hard work. Because not every job, I worked for two years at American Eagle Airlines in, in, in Chicago, basically American Airlines. And I, I, I worked double shifts. I worked when I had to. And I made the money that I had to. And it was tough. And it really was. I ultimately left. Don't get me wrong. But I put the two years in. I'm just saying, whatever it is you choose to do, you eventually get better and better at it until you're good enough and you can find that success as long as you persevere. But I'll tell you this thing, my friends. I can't speak to what it is you do. I say video games because I understand streaming. I can talk about music because I make music. I went and played guitar on the streets. I've been playing music my whole life. I'd play some shows. I might get paid 100 bucks for playing that one show, but they don't come all that often. Twice a month, I didn't pay the bills. So I went to the subway in Chicago, got a permit, and I played songs. I played original songs. I made $7 an hour. You play music, people will throw you tips because they're being nice. I played top 40s. I learned how to play some Neil Young, some Oasis, some CCR. I started making 40 bucks an hour. I played Foo Fighters, and I'd have people coming down being like, dude, yes, and they'd throw a 20 at me. And I was like, you play the songs people like. That's the service. And I'd always try to bring them in. You know, I was, uh, how old was I at this point? I must have been 20. And I'm playing my crappy little acoustic guitar. And I'm playing My Hero by the Foo Fighters. And some, I remember this, this dude come up to me and said, bro, Foo Fighters. And he threw 20 bucks at me. And they start singing along. And this is a service for these people. They're working hard. They're on their way to work or school. And they heard this live version of a song they love. And they joined in. Magic. I'd go out in front of Wrigley Field. I'd play guitar. The dudes are getting out. They're drunk. They're older. They make money. And it was $200 an hour. To be fair, you only have about 40, 40 minutes to an hour when the game's letting out, when everyone's partying, drunk, and excited. Remember, a guy came up to me, and he was just cheering. And he was like, yes! And he just he threw 50 bucks in, in the thing. And he was like, I love it. Life is good. You give them that joy and that happiness when you're playing that music. And that's just something I did. I don't know what it is that you can do. But I can just leave with these final words. For one, shout out to Phil for the op-ed. My final words on this, I will tell you. Life is not easy. It was never supposed to be easy. Why would you want an easy life anyway? You play video games. You know how it goes. When you put in the cheat codes and make your character invincible with unlimited ammo or whatever, it's fun for a second and then it gets boring. No, climbing the mountain, the journey is what makes it all worth it. When your muscles are burning, and you make it to the top of that mountain when you lift that, when, when you finish that final rep and you feel that pain and you just feel it. You did it. That feels great. That's life. If it's easy, it's just boring. What's the point of playing a game that's not hard? How about you go play one of those walking simulators these woke game developers want to make where you walk around? No, it's got to have a challenge to it. It's got to frustrate you a little bit because when you, when you, when you finally beat it, you know you did it. So Jordan Peterson says, find the heaviest thing you can lift and lift it. I say, think about the hardest thing you can do that is productive, that will make the lives of you and everyone around you better. What is the hardest work that you can do? Is it solving a math puzzle? Is it making a video game? Getting a job and just working the hours? Whatever it may be, challenge yourself and do it. I saw a great meme. The guy said that he hated his job. And so what he did was he started imagining that his boss was a quest giver in an RPG and that the money he received was experience points. And all of a sudden, it you know, made him laugh. So he kept going to his boss saying, what can I get done for you right now? And the boss would say, go do these things. He would go and do them and he would pretend like he was playing a video game and solving a quest to gain experience points. I think it's funny. I think it's funny that that's how you envision it. I mean, this should be the natural way you, you, you think about it. You know, for me, I remember that's kind of always how I viewed it. I always saved my money whenever I could working the jobs. But I'd say like, okay, what do I need to do right now to get from this point to this point? I want to break that barrier. I want to get to that point. And those were the milestones, the accomplishments that I fought for. You got to do it too. Society is failing men and boys. It's not just because it is, is telling men they're toxically masculine or whatever. 
It's because it's not giving them the right motivations and the challenges. But I'll tell you, when they say men are toxic, when they say you don't deserve this, you don't do, do that. This is the world of men. It's not fair. Ladies night, women get discounts. That shouldn't be allowed. Life isn't easy. Be a man. This is what it means. It means your hands will be calloused. It means your skin will be scarred. It means you will be chiseled and grizzled and experienced, and you will carry the stories of the world beneath your belt, and it is never going to be easy. You think you just get to be the world champ? There's only one world champ, and not everyone's going to be the world champ, but you can get as close as you can and maximize your potential, and I assure you it will be hard. So good luck. The real message I think men and boys need is something like that. It w- you will fall you will get hurt. I go to the skate park and I see these little kids. They want to drop in on the half pipe and they're scared to fall. And I, you know what I tell them? You are going to fall. Now drop in. And they get scared. Like, but I don't want to fall. Like, that's too bad. You do not get to experience the joys and the successes of being a great skateboarder without paying your dues. That's what we call it. So when I watch someone fall down, Assuming they're not seriously hurt, they fall and they hit their elbow and they're like, ah, you know, pay your dues, baby. That's what I call it. You got to pay your dues. You don't get to fly through the air 20 feet up, spinning around and all that stuff without knowing that at some point you must pay your dues. You will fall. You will get hurt. If you couldn't fall and get hurt, nobody would care. You did it. Let me put it this way. Can you get hurt playing tic-tac-toe? Yeah, I didn't think so. Unless like the pencil snaps and a piece of the, the, the graphene, or graphite flies in the air and hits you in the face. Yeah, right. Is anybody going to watch the sporting event of tic-tac-toe? Yeah, sorry. But with, with games like chess or magic, where people watch and there's no real risk of physical injury, there is the challenge before you of beating someone mentally. So it's not all about being sports. I'm just saying it won't be easy. Do you want to be the best? Well, risks come with it. I'm going to wrap it up there. Smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel. Share the show with your friends. We got another segment coming up for you, my friends. And uh, I think we got it lined up right here. This is mostly going to be like a reaction video, I guess, because Vivek Ramaswamy is a genius. But this will be coming up later today. So smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel. Share the show with everybody you know. Tell them it's the best show. Everybody agrees. At least that's what I've been told. And buy the song Coming Home at B-U-Y, cominghome.com, buycominghome.com. Pre-order it now, support our work, and we'll see you all in the next segment.